This video was brought to you by LogRocket, the front-end performance monitor that records videos of user sessions along with logs and network data, surfacing problems and revealing the root cause of every bug. Try it today at LogRocket.com slash YT. Hello developers. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use view refs. We're going to be accessing DOM elements in a view app. I'm over here on codesandbox.io if you'd like to follow along. We are going to be doing quite a few things today. We're going to be getting DOM elements in this app. We're going to be displaying HTML elements. We're going to be displaying HTML input values. We'll also display a view elements URL. And then finally, I'm going to show you how to handle conditionals in view with refs. So some exciting things to go through. But before we get into it, what the heck is view and what the heck are view refs? Well, Vue is a progressive JavaScript framework created by Evan Yu and the Vue core team with contributions from hundreds of community members, also used in nearly a million projects and has quite a few stars on GitHub. It's a pretty newbie friendly framework and it focuses on the Vue layer only. Also has a massive ecosystem of supporting libraries that help you easily build responsive web experiences. And this is where refs come in because refs are Vue.js instance properties that are used to register or indicate a reference to HTML elements or child elements in the template of your app. If a ref attribute is added to an HTML element in your view template, you'll then be able to reference that element or even a child element in your view instance. You can also access the DOM element directly too. It is a read only attribute and returns an object. So it's already sounding pretty promising, but how do we actually use refs in view? Well, the ref attribute makes a DOM element selectable by serving as the key in the parent ref attribute. Putting a ref attribute in an input element, for instance, will expose the parent DOM node as this.refs.input, or alternatively, this.refs with brackets and then quotes, and inside those brackets and quotes, input. But back to this.refs, you can manipulate a DOM element by defining methods on the element's reference. For example, let's say you wanted to focus on an input element with this, you would say, this dot refs using our syntax here with a dollar sign and the input in the quotes and brackets. And then we would just append that focus method. In this way, refs can be used just like document dot query selector in JavaScript. So the refs can be accessed both inside the view instance and outside of it. However, they are not data properties, so they're not reactive. Now let's get into the fun stuff over here in this sandbox. I'm gonna open up my components folder. I have some sample code here. We're gonna be taking a look at some of the components here, but just to get us up and running with a simple counter app, I have this code snippet. Now, as you can see, this user interface is displaying a simple counter that gets updated on click. But when we open our developer tools in the browser here, you'll notice it's logging undefined. What? It's very important that we get the syntax right because this means view is not seeing this as an error, but it is an error. And what we already know about refs is that re they return an object, but we're getting this undefined. So something is wrong. And this, this is a little subtle thing that maybe some people already picked up on looking at this code here. But our problem, if you haven't noticed it yet, is that on this console.log line, our syntax is way off. This.ref actually needs to be this dot dollar sign refs. So now when we run this code and inspect it, this is gonna return an object. Going back to the syntax, inside the template, it's actually called ref, but when we refer to it in the view instance, it's called refs. Very important to note so that we don't get undefined return. And you can access every single possible property of the referenced element, including the element as it is in the template. Now, let's discuss getting DOM elements 
in your application. Let's try to log some of the, these properties that might be of interest to us. Going back to this little code snippet, I'm just gonna paste in some CSS styling here, nothing too crazy, just to illustrate that once we go back in here and inspect this, we can see that some of these things are populated and changed. So kind of cool if you want to get DOM elements. Now, what if we wanted to display HTML elements in our app? If we wanted to do that as it is in the DOM, we would go into the submit method here, and we're just gonna tweak this methods code to the following on our console.log line. We're gonna go this.refs, and then we're gonna go dot .input. The input here is the reference name we have inside of our element, and it can be any name of our choosing, just ref equals input, pretty straightforward, but it can be any name of your choice. What if we wanted to display the HTML input value? In other words, the string that was typed into the text box in the UI. Well, we'd go back into our submit method and we're gonna change our code once again, going to this console.log line to this.refs.input and then we're gonna add dot value. And what this does, is it displays exactly the string we type in, which is pretty similar to query selection with vanilla JavaScript and even jQuery if you're still using that. Uh, but just the syntax here is absolutely streamlined and so easy to implement. Moving on, let's display a view elements URL. The web page in which the element can be found is also one of the many things that can be displayed with the view ref. So once again, back into our submit method, we're gonna change the code to the following on the console.log line, this.refs.input, and now we're going to add base URI. Notice the capitalization here, again, syntax, very important. There are many other things we can access and log with the ref just from information on the object returned. Finally, let's talk about handling conditionals in a view app. View refs can also be used inside elements that output more than one element in the DOM, like conditional statements where v4 directives are used. So instead of objects, refs are gonna return an array of the items when they're called. To illustrate this, I have just a little snippet here, and it's a simple list. And now when we open our dev tools, as you can see, it looks like this. So lots you can do with refs. This video has showed you how to reference HTML elements in your DOM, in your view app. You can now access and log these elements by all the element properties like value, child node, data attributes, even the base URL that houses it. It's important to note though that refs get populated after the view instance has initiated and the component has been rendered. So using refs in computed properties, it's kind of discouraged because it has the ability to directly manipulate child nodes. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed the tutorial, you can see the full tutorial in our blog post linked in the description below. And if you want to see more videos and tutorials like this, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and leave a comment in the comment section below. You can also find more tutorials and videos we've already posted on our YouTube page.